presentation in digital marketing. So to know more in deep about this field, I actually decided to join a digital marketing firm. Okay, a digital marketing firm afterwards, and definitely I must share this. I have actually learned a lot of new stuff over there, and just recently this year, Sahaja, okay, just recently this year, I joined Extremo as a digital marketer, and I'm so happy. Okay, I'm so happy to be your speaker today to share more career tips and advice with all of you here. So to start off today. Uh, I have one questions for you MT students. So I saw all of, all of you are so excited, right? And you give a lot of emoji here. So tell me guys, how many of you here actually heard of LinkedIn or you guys have LinkedIn already? Or langsung tak pernah dengar? Uh, so you can actually comment in the comment sections here. So I can actually see, I can actually know how many of you already have a LinkedIn account already. Pernah dengar? Oh, a lot of people say like, oh, already have a LinkedIn account and uh, heard before. Some say don't have, never heard of it. It's okay. That's why we are here today. Am I right? <laughs> okay. So, um, let me continue. Okay. So, yes, uh, if you already have a LinkedIn account already, don't forget to connect with Cherry. Okay. So, you from the screen itself, you can actually see, um, my username here, it's Cherry Chin, just Cherry Chin Sahaja. So I shall see you there, okay? I'm so excited to connect with all of you here, if possible, or most of you here, all right? Okay, so right before we start the webinar today, make sure you guys are not feeling food coma, yeah? Not feeling food coma from the lunch just now because this is actually after lunch hour. So usually if you have a lot of food, so you might, you know, have a little bit, you know, doze off, or a little bit sleepy. So make sure you have some sweets with you to keep yourself awake. Okay. All right. And of course, I'm not the only speaker here from X Remote today. You can see another beautiful lady. Okay. Let us invite our second speaker to join us here today. Hi, Intan. Hi. Okay, thank you so much, Cherry, for the warm introduction. And hello and a very good afternoon, everyone, especially to University Malaysia Terengganu students. Okay, thank you so much uh, for joining us in today's webinar. And I hope all of you are doing physically and mentally well so far. My name is Intan Judana, and you guys may call me Intan. I am one of the marketing trainees here in Xtremo. And currently, I am pursuing English for professional communication in UITM Shah Alam. Okay, so as you can uh, as you can see in the in the screen, here's a short detail about my working experience. I used to work as a freelance proofreader, where I checked the grammatical errors and also sentence structure in students' assignment. And I also have uh, experience in handling events and managing social media. Okay, I know that some of you might wonder how I suddenly venture into marketing. Kenapa tiba-tiba daripada ambil kos bahasa, tiba-tiba ambil marketing pula kan? Okay, well, one fact about me is that I am a risk taker and I think uh, marketing is very interesting as I get to play with words. And I also discovered my passion <coughs> in marketing when I handle a few events in UITM where I promoted the event as well as copywriting. Okay, and besides, I joined Xtremo last month, uh, which is in October. And I'm very happy to be here as one of the speakers where I can share more knowledge with all of you here. So, and also I saw some of you have a LinkedIn account. So don't forget to connect with me there, okay? And my LinkedIn profile is on the screen and you may ask questions about anything related to today's webinar or also career tips. And if you would like to ask questions uh, regarding English pun, lagi bagus because I will be very happy to help. And once again, it's so nice to see all of you here today, and I hope you will receive uh, many input from us today, okay? All right, enough about the speakers, and let's start the session now, shall we? Okay, let's go to the next slide. All right, I know there are some of you who already know Xtremo and what we do in Xtremo, and there are also maybe some of you that are not uh, still not familiar with Xtremo, so, let me give you guys a brief introduction about Xtremo. Okay, 
We're actually a one-stop recruitment solutions provider that connects the job seekers with their potential employers and vice versa. Dia macam matchmaker lah. Kalau dekat luar, ada kawan-kawan tolong matchkan kita dengan uh, dengan someone. But in Xremo, we match you with your potential employer. Or in short, Xremo is basically a platform where you can find your ideal job here as well as connecting employers with direct talents. Jadi, uh, if you would like to get a career consultation or tips, our recruitment advisors in Xremo are here to help you. And our, our recruitment advisors are like our little angel. So if you guys have any questions, you may ask them right away. Don't worry, we are not going to fight you. So without further ado, let's go on to the next slide. All right. Okay, for your information, it doesn't matter if you're still studying or not. You can still sign up with Xremo for a smooth career journey. Okay, and don't worry because our recruitment advisors are always here to guide you every step of the way. Macam orang cakap, everything is at our fingertips. Okay, you can join us simply by uh, scanning the QR code provided on the screen or you may go to our website uh, which is www.xremo.com slash sign up. Okay, for Android users, you may install our app to get the latest updates regarding our job vacancies via Play Store. Uh, you can just type at three more on the search bar and you may find our app in there. Okay, but unfortunately for iOS users, I'm sorry, but our app is still under development. But don't worry, you can still visit our website using Safari, uh, Chrome or any other platforms. And not to forget, uh, when you register with at three more, you will receive an e-certificate from us. It's free uh, and you will receive our e-certificate via email that you use to register with us. And you will also win a chance to receive not just two, but three mystery gifts from us. So sit back and just enjoy today's session, okay? You can also jot, uh, jot down some important notes because there are so many things that we would like to share with you. So jangan lupa ambil uh, notebook or anything lah, phone ke, jot down some notes uh, and make sure that you stay uh, throughout the session, okay? okay? Next, we will share with you five simple steps to register with Xremo. So let's head on to the next slide. Okay, <clears throat> previously, we received uh, some feedback from the students regarding how to register with Xremo? Sebab ada student yang tanya, macam mana nak register? And macam mana nak uh, update profile apa semua kan? So today, uh, we will guide you through it. As you can see on your screen, we have five simple steps for you to register with Xremo. First thing first, you can go to Xremo's website, www.xremo.com and you can create a new account there by using your email address and password. Next, you need to verify your account in the registered email. So make sure you don't forget your email address and password, okay? It's very simple. Uh, we will send you a verification email and there will be a guideline on how to verify your account. And if I'm not mistaken, it's just the one click away. So after verifying your account, you can finally log in and you can start updating your profile, okay? Put all necessary information in your profile and uh, whatnot in the in Xremo punya tu. And tada, you can now start looking for your preferred job. Senang kan? Ha, bukan tu je. But you can also get your own resume generated by Xremo when you update your profile. Ha, best tak? Sebab senang kan bila kita dah update profile kita, tiba-tiba Xremo terus generate digital resume. Ha, tapi mesti ada yang tak tahu Digital resume tu apa dia? Okay, so let's go to the next slide. Okay, so this is a sample of a digital resume generated by Xremo. So when you update your profile, your resume will look like this. Okay, it will have a list of your details like your education background, your working experience. See, it's very convenient kan? Uh, and there's, uh, there's more than that. So can we go to the next slide please? Okay. Apart from your education background and work experience, this digital resume will also include your achievements, your skills, language proficiency, and peer references. So anything that you update uh, in your profile, uh, nanti Xremo akan generate 
Ha, jadi macam ni lah. So dia akan nampak macam ni. It's very simple. You just need to create a new account with Actrimo and start updating your profile there. And it will be beneficial for you guys because when your profile is updated to 90%, there's a higher chance for you to get noticed by our recruiters, by the recruiters, I mean. Okay, so what are you waiting for? Cepat-cepat and create a new account with us now uh, to get a digital resume as well as an e-cert. And for the next few minutes, we will talk about our agenda of the day. So let's go to the next slide. Okay, so for today's agenda, you will learn about five simple steps uh, to get job search success. And in this section, we're going to guide you about how to start job hunting, etc. Okay, and we will also talk about the five major keys in creating a resume. For example, what to include and what not to include in your resume. Next, you will learn about how and what to prepare prior to your interview and also how to get noticed on LinkedIn. Uh, lastly, we'll have an interesting win share to post session and there are mystery gifts awaiting for you so stay tuned. Jangan pergi mana-mana, duduk diam sebab banyak sangat tips kami nak bagi dekat students from UMT. Okay, and also uh, if you guys have any questions uh, you may do so by typing in the chat box in Webex and we shall attempt to answer your question during the Q&A session later. Okay, so Cherry, sekejap lagi kita ada apa eh sebelum kita uh, start our agenda ni? Hmm. Yeah, I think we will have some uh, engagement time with our students, right? Yeah. And we have quite a lot of agenda today. And before we hop on to our first agenda, let's energize ourselves, shall we? Because I yeah, understand. Go. Yeah, because I understand that it's already past our lunch time, and I'm sure that <laughs> some of you are starting to feel sleepy. So why don't you guys join us on this energizer time? And if you are joining today's session using your phone, you can either participate in our energizer uh, session by using your laptop or your friend's smartphone or whichever that is convenient for you, all right? Okay, are you ready for our energizer time? Uh, send us your reaction so we can know. Okay, you guys boleh hantar reaction sekarang? So I can know? Yeah, a lot of people ah. actually commented they are ready. Okay, dah nampak dah ada yang excited tu. Okay, let's go to the next slide. Okay, it's actually a full survey and the question is, have you ever challenged yourself just to make your life more interesting? Uh, so what do you think? Would you choose the first option, uh, which is, yes, I need to shake up my days. Or would you choose the second option, which is, no, I'm too busy for that. Uh, okay, so you can start submitting your answer now by scanning the QR code provided on the screen. Let us view your thoughts and don't worry, there is no right or wrong answer. We just want to know your opinion on this. Okay, because I'm very sure there are people who think challenges are fun for them. Like, what is life without taking any risk, right? But there are also people who love to stay within their comfort zone. And that is totally fine too. Uh, so what do you think, Cherry? Would you pick the, the first option or the second option? Uh, what is your well, thought? To me, I think I'm somewhere in between. I'm, uh, I have tried, you know, challenge myself to do something that I've never tried before. Uh, for example, cliff jumping. Yeah, it took me, I don't know how long stand on, on, on the cliff itself before I jump on down. <laughs> it took really so long for me to jump down. So I think it's also very, very challenging thing in life. And that's really very interesting because it's something, some memories that I can, you know, recall and then I can share with my friends or our UMT students here today. Yeah. yeah. So sometimes I would be, you know, too busy to challenge myself. I would just want to stay inside my home, my comfort zone. But yeah, there's two sides of me too. What about you, Adi? In time, so sorry. <laughs> okay. Um, for me, um, previously, lah, I was a language student. So, apa-apa kalau nak join ke apa, mesti yang berkaitan dengan bahasa je. But, I didn't expect 
to be in here today, especially in Actually More, and I'm doing the marketing uh, apa? marketing department kan. So macam for me it, it is great to have you know some kind of challenges in your life because it is it is interesting to have those kind of risiko. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so uh, guys, don't forget to take your phone and scan the QR code now. Please submit your answer so we can see what is your opinion on the question. Okay, so kita nak kira sampai berapa eh? Kalau kira, kira sampai lima, okay tak agak-agak kalau kita buat countdown? For five I think seconds. okay lah. Oh, five seconds okay. then we can move on. Alright, so I will give you guys around five seconds to submit your answer before we move on to the next slide. Okay, in the count of five, four, three, three two, two, one. Alright, poll is closed. Okay, thank you so much for participating and we shall now move on to our first agenda. Are you ready guys? Uh, send us a reaction if you're ready, okay? Let me see. Yes. Okay, you guys are really awesome. <laughs> awesome, awesome. Okay, and I see some of you guys are hyped up for today's webinar already. And without wasting any more time, let's start now. Okay, let's go to the next slide. All right, as you can see on your screen, there are five simple tips towards a successful job search. Huh, simple, okay? First thing first, you must search for the right job. So you need to start thinking of uh, what kind of job that you would like to apply for and you need to think whether it's suitable for you or not. And also, check the benefits offered by the company like uh, work-life balance or the salary. And bila dah check semua tu, bila kita dah check uh, the benefits offered by the company tu, after finding the right one, you may proceed to the next step which is to start updating your resume, okay? And this is one of the most important things that you need to do, okay? Not only that, but you also need to check your social media profiles. This is because some hiring managers, uh, they will go to your social media profile uh, to check whether you are right for them or not. And I'm not sure how they do that, but it is possible. And after doing these points, you can finally start looking for suitable jobs. Please ensure that the job that you are applying for is related to your education background, okay? And this step is important as well. So don't just apply for a job, okay? Check dulu qualification kita, kelayakan kita, and see whether we are fit enough for the job scope, okay? Let's say uh, you're a graduate from a linguistic course. Ha, jangan jangan mengadang-adang ada pula nak apply dekat law firm. Okay, so when you are done with these steps, you can start preparing for interviews. Ha, preparation macam mana tu intan? Ha, preparation in terms of your attire, uh, transportation or kalau musim sekarang, uh, most uh, managers choose to conduct an online interview. So kita kena check juga our internet connection, elok ke tidak uh, and for attire, Make sure you dress appropriately. Uh, kalau untuk lelaki, rambut tu uh, bolehlah sikat elok-elok bagi nampak handsome sikit. And yang perempuan pula, if you are wearing a hijab, uh, make sure it's proper lah for the interview. Uh, and feel free to wear makeup so that you will look more presentable during the interview. Uh, apa orang kata macam serlahkan kecantikan dan personality during the interview. So bila your employer tengok pun, they will be more interested in hiring you. Uh, okay, then equip yourself with possible questions yang employer akan tanya. And I think the most famous question would be, what is your strength and what is your weakness? Uh, selalu sangat kita akan dapat masa interview. Okay, and nowadays, uh, we live in a world where everything is just one click away. So you may Google the questions and in there, you will find numerous questions yang mungkin akan ditanya oleh majikan anda. Okay, all right. So next one, we will share with you about our next agenda. So let's go to the next slide. Okay, how to start with the right job? Uh, but uh, before we get into details, I would like to know how many of you are still here with us. So send me a reaction now for me to see. Okay. Sebab banyak sangat ni agenda ni kita nak bincang. Uh, 
Ah, okay. Thank you, guys. You guys are so awesome, lah. Best, lah. Okay. Thank you so much. Okay, let's go to the next slide. <clears throat> All right. I'm sure some of you might be asking yourself, how to start with this and how to start with that? Okay, don't worry because we've got you covered. Okay, not many people are aware that before applying for jobs, we need to figure out our strengths and also weaknesses. But before we get to the strengths and weaknesses part, you need to have a clear strategy. What kind of strategy and why must we have one? Ah, this is due to high competition nowadays, so you need to stand out among other candidates, okay? Ha, tapi, macam mana nak set strategi ni? Ha, jawapan dia, you need to think of uh, what kind of job that you would like to venture into and which company that you would like to apply for. So, bila dah tahu nak apply dekat mana, dah tahu apa minat you, you bolehlah pergi dekat step kedua. Ha, so, after figuring out these two, you may think of what skills you have. For example, uh, you would like to venture into marketing. And in marketing, you need to make sure you're a quick thinker as trends are always changing. And you need to also be creative. So if you have the skills required for marketing, then you're good to go. Uh, another tip for me would be um, career assessment. Or you can take a personality test, which is on 16personalities.com. Uh, it's actually a free website, so you may go there and answer all questions dalam tu. Uh, from there, you will know what is your personality and which kind of job yang sesuai dengan you. Uh, senang je. Nanti, uh, after this session, you can go to 16personalities.com and then ambillah assessment dalam tu. Uh, okay, next, don't forget to update your education background. Make sure you put the recent ones in your resume, okay? Janganlah letak yang lama-lama. Uh, make sure kalau for education background, uh, time the time span would be uh, between 5 to 10 years je. Uh, so make sure you always check your resume. So, okay, next would be a field research. A field research means uh, you need to do a background check on your dream company. For instance, you would like to work in Petronas or Nestle. So you need to know their mission and vision, what they do, their company culture because macam mana nak kerja dekat sana kalau kita tak tahu dengan siapa yang kita nak bekerja kan. Ha, so uh, you guys boleh buat uh, a little bit of research lah on uh, on the position. Okay. And also, you can also do a research on the position that you are applying for. For example, you're applying for a content writer position. So you need to do a bit of research regarding the job scope, okay? This is very important because you have to know what you're going to do. And if, uh, if not, then it might be a hassle for you in the future. So make sure you do your research uh, and you have all necessary information in hand, okay? Uh, next, you need to allocate your time to job hunting. And I know some of you like to do things at the last minute and believe me, I do that too. But to save you guys from unnecessary problems in the future, you can start looking for internships and you can start looking for jobs uh, two or three months before you start your internship and job. And uh, based on my experience, I applied two months before I started my internship. So contohnya, I started my internship in October. So I already started looking for internships around July and August macam tu. Uh, okay, so jangan lupa buat awal-awal tau. Jangan buat last minute. No, no, no. Okay. Alright, so you need to also open your mind and heart for other options because there is a high chance for you to get rejected by your dream company. So if you are in this kind of situation, please never give up because there's always a way for you to improve yourself. Uh, apa orang kata tu? Where there is a will, there is a way. Kalau dalam bahasa Melayu, di mana ada kemahuan, di situ ada jalan. Okay, so let's go to the next slide. Okay, so <clears throat> after you're done searching for the right job, mestilah kena update resume kan? Ha. Tapi, kenapa kena update? Tak boleh ke, ke, uh, tak boleh ke kita guna resume yang sama? Ha, jangan macam tu tau. Okay, no, no, no. Jangan buat macam tu, okay? 
think of your resume as a tool to market yourself to employers. Okay, but uh, what does resume mean? Okay. A resume is a summary of your qualifications and it consists of around maybe one to two pages, I think. And uh, it is like the employer's first impression of you. Uh, kalau macam contoh lah, this is uh, some kind of analogy. Contoh kalau kita keluar, kita jumpa orang, our first impression would be uh, the way they dress up, uh, their hair, uh, their baju, kasut, apa semua kan. So kita akan tengok. For employers, their first impression is your resume. Ah, so, dalam resume tu, your resume should highlight your latest skills and experiences that could make you an outstanding candidate. And over time, uh, you will likely obtain new skills and more experiences. And as a result, you need to constantly update your resume to reflect on those changes. Uh, okay, but how often should you update your resume? First, when you have an important career update. For example, you took a digital marketing course via Google or you acquired a new skill in programming language and any other skills. Okay, uh, dekat Google, uh, kita ada digital marketing course. So, you boleh pergi ke Google and then search the digital marketing course. And I think dekat situ ada dalam 26 coursework that you need to complete. And after completing the course, you will receive a free e-certificate from Google. Ha, best lah. Tenang kan? Ha, so, jangan lupa. <laughs> okay. And also, not to forget your educational background. Make sure you put your recent academic experience. Macam yang saya cakap tadi, uh, in the span of 5 to 10 years. So, make sure you check lah selalu. Uh, contohnya macam your bachelor's degree. And you need to always update your resume. So, it will be easier for you in the long run. Uh, okay. So far, uh, we have talked about five simple steps uh, towards a successful job search and the importance of an updated resume. And I'm sure some of you want to know what are the keys for a successful resume, right? Uh, as a student myself, I always wonder what should I include in my resume? Do I need to put this? Do I need to put that? Okay, so you guys shouldn't worry too much because we are always here to guide you today, okay? All right, so let's go on to the next slide. Okay, so there are five magic keys in creating your resume. And whatever you put in your resume must be relevant enough for the position that you are applying for. First thing first, your contact details. You can include your full name, email address, your phone number, or even a LinkedIn profile. So it will be easier for the recruiter to reach out to you. And nowadays, Having a LinkedIn profile is very important for job seekers out there because most hiring managers and recruiters, they will go to LinkedIn and they will contact you if you are fit for their company. So if your profile is always up to date, then that will be great as the recruiters are able to browse through it and they will get to know you better. <clears throat> Next will be a self-introduction. Okay, so dalam ni, you can give them an overview of where you graduated, your qualifications, etc. They can be a short summary for your resume. Okay. For instance, you can write, I graduated from University ABC and I took a what course and I have these skills uh, that can help contribute more in your company. You just need to highlight a few things about your qualifications and you're done. Uh, meanwhile, uh, uh, for next point, which is your education background, you need to make sure you only put in the recent ones. You may put your university name, uh, what major or minor you're taking, and what year you took the course. Mm. And you can also put your relevant coursework in this section. For instance, if you are applying for a content writer position and you're an English major, you can put your past coursework like uh, technical writing or any other related coursework in your resume. All right. Some may ask if you should put your CGPA in the education section. For me, there is no right or wrong answer. You can put it if your CGPA is uh, greater than 3.8 and it's totally okay if you don't put it. Okay, so nak letak boleh, tak nak letak pun tak apa, tak ada orang nak marah. Okay, 
So uh, the next one will be your work experience. You can include your position in the company that you work for and on what year you join the company. And you need to also put your relevant responsibilities and make sure you're using past tense. Okay, so this is another tip for me lah. Uh, dekat uh, education, education background pula, dekat work experience, <laughs> dekat work experience, you need to make sure you're using past tense. For example, uh, sebelum ni, you uh, you have managed an event. So dekat, uh, dekat work experience tu, you can write, okay, manage with a D, manage an event and uh, manage to obtain blah, blah, blah. Whatever your your achievement lah dalam tu. Tapi make sure guna past tense, okay? Uh, uh, and another tip from me would be when you're writing your resume, make sure uh, you ask your friends, your friends ke, your lecturer ke to proofread your resume. So nanti uh, bila in the future tak ada masalah lah for that. Alright. So lastly would be the relevant skills. Okay. You can put your relevant skills in your resume which is soft and also hard skills. Okay, do you know what soft skill and hard skill are? Kalau tahu, cakap yes. Kalau tak tahu, cakap no. Okay, let me see. You guys can uh, type in the chat box. So, let me see. Okay. Okay, I can see that some of you guys dah tahu and ada yang belum tahu. Okay, tak apa. So, let me explain to you guys. Okay. Hard skills. Um, hard skills, they can be taught. Contohnya, writing, reading, uh, math or ability to use computer programs. So, uh, ability to use computer programs, contohnya macam uh, Photoshop. And kalau sekarang pun dekat pun kita ada video editing punya software like CapCut or VN. So, kalau uh, kalau you guys ada um, ability to do that kind of thing, itu dah dikira hard skill. Okay. Meanwhile, uh, for soft skills, Soft skills ni are traits that make you a good employee. For example, communication skill, listening skill, um, and many more. So if you possess these skills, make sure you put them in your resume and remember, only put the relevant ones, okay? So moving forward, we will talk more about social media profiles, uh, interview preparation, and ways to get noticed on LinkedIn. So now, I'll be passing the floor to Cherry. Cherry, the floor is yours. Thank you, Intan. That was a very, very great sharing from Intan, right? Even she shared the hard skill and also the soft skill to our students in UMT here. So without further ado, let's go to the next slide. Okay. So next slide we have, what do we have here? You're right. We have Will job applications impacted okay, by social media profile? All right, what a good question here, right? What do you think, students? Do you think that nowadays the recruiter or the employer or the interviewer would go to your social media to find out who you are? Like, uh, for example, your Facebook, your Instagram, IG, your TikTok and many more. So you can comment in our chat box here and let us know whether you think that would you afraid that nanti ah this employer ah employer ABC ah tentang saya punya IG nampak saya punya kambar ni ayo macam mana ah uh, not really. I saw Aiman say not really, and I saw Lok say yes. A few of you say yes. Okay. So the answer we shall review soon. Okay, <laughs> we shall review soon. So um, let's go to the next slide to see what we have for next. Okay, so like just now, some of you say yes, some of you say not really, some say no. So it's actually a very good questions here that we should be discussing today, okay, this afternoon, all right? In case you don't know yet, actually, huh, actually, there are many recruiters that actually started to look for candidate all over the social media. Okay, all over the social media. So you tell me, is it important to set up a decent profile and start connecting with people? Is it 
right? So just recently only, just recently only, I heard from my friends that she realized oh, quite a lot of, you know, fresh graduate, okay, like you guys or to be, soon to be fresh graduate like you guys, actually start looking for jobs on social media as well. Okay, for example, uh, Twitter, uh, LinkedIn, uh, IG. So all these are, you know, the true story based on the statistic and also studies. So for example, guys, for example, creating a standout LinkedIn profile is very vital nowadays, which are necessary details, okay, like your educational background, okay, educational background, your professional summary, up-to-date profile picture. So up to date profile picture is very important now. So don't you ever show the picture of you probably like 10 years ago, still probably like primary school or even younger. Okay. So nobody would know how do you actually look like. So put a recent photo, put a recent photo as your profile picture on your social media. So people know how exactly you look like now. All right. So all these details is very important. Uh, because it would make your profile easier to be noticed by the employer, okay? And make sure not to forget to include your skills or your um, portfolio. If you have any career portfolio, remember to link it in your profile as well. If you have any, that's uh, not necessary to have, okay? A career portfolio, not necessary to have for everyone. But if you have, you can actually link it in your profile so that if the employer wants to know more about what you have done, they can actually go to your portfolio to find out more, to know that if you are the right candidate that they are actually looking for. So I want, I want to actually sampaikan here is that connections can be really crucial here for your job search success. Okay, after you complete your profile on social media, you can actually start connecting, okay? Or it can actually start connecting with the people surrounds you. So, for example, for example, take a cherry exam example. Okay, so after I actually completed my um LinkedIn profile, I actually start connect with the people that I know. For example, my college mate, okay, college mate of mine. Then I also connect with my um professor, my lecturer, and my friends, or even uh, my relatives that's almost same age with me or elder than me. Okay, as soon as I actually found them on LinkedIn, I start connecting with them. Okay, there is also a place where I start to expand my network. All right, so this is the importance of us growing our network connections on social media. All right, so who knows, right? Uh, one day they might actually approach you for some job openings. Am I right? So we never miss out any opportunity here. And most importantly, not only that we we need to, you know, connect with the people that we know, but also strangers. Okay, also strangers, probably they are actually from same industry like yours, uh, digital marketing or, you know, a uh, graphic designer. Um, what else do we have? Uh? We have still have a lot, am I right? Yeah, so secondly on the screen is to join the relevant uh, group and contribute idea to make yourself noticeable how we do that okay not only on linkedin itself but facebook okay facebook it's also another great channel to expand your professional network here so for example okay today i will be giving you a lot a lot of examples so you can get the idea better here all right so if you have a notes with you it's better for you to note it down if you think that is important for you and in case you forget later because we are all human here. We tend to forget things very, very fast, right? I understand that. So for example, uh, like Cherry, I joined a marketing group here, okay, in, in Facebook. So why would I join a marketing group in Facebook? Definitely because it's actually providing me access to knowledge from other marketers as well. So not only that I learned from uh, people surrounds me, but also the people, okay, the strangers, uh, I connect on Facebook in the Facebook group itself. Okay, I can learn more from them. And also, it's an opportunity for me to expand my network. Yes. And yeah, that leads to career opportunity or even job openings also, because we will discuss our idea in the group. So for example, 
some days, some other professional marketers, right, they will actually throw some questions in the group. So they might want to seek advice from other marketers as well in the same group. So this is your chance to actually voice out your opinion. And that is exactly how you will be easily noticed by others as well. Who knows? One day, your idea will be used by others, am I right? Yeah, so we don't miss out any possible or potential opportunities from anywhere. All right, so that's the second point that we want to, you know, convey to our students here. Third, it's our personal branding. Okay, personal branding is another worth mentioning topic here as well. Okay, so how do you want to build your own personal brand on social media, especially on um, TikTok, LinkedIn, IG? So recently, these these are the you know social media platform that is very famous, and the youngsters, the professional, always use this platform to expand their connections and build their personal brands. Okay. I'm not sure if you guys came across of this kind of profile, um, uh, specifically IG, okay, in Instagram. So people, for example, one people, okay, one unknown people, right? Probably she started one business. So she started to build her, her own brand for the product and also at the same time, her personal brand. Her followers start at zero and increase tremendously in only three months just because she's actually providing value to others. So she's actually creating, building a personal brand on social media, okay? So for example, uh, on LinkedIn itself, LinkedIn actually they provide certificates if you completed certain assessment on the site, okay? They have a lot, they have a Microsoft Word, Google Ads, uh, Microsoft Excel, a lot, a lot, like really, really a lot, all right? So if, you already taken the assessment and you have gotten your certificate, don't waste it, okay? Don't waste it and update it on your profile, on your LinkedIn profile. So you can actually list all your relevant experience, your achievements, your accomplishments, so that your profile actually would gain a higher chance to be noticed by the potential employer here. And they can easily see if you are the right talent that they are looking for. Okay, so these are the tips how you can actually build up your personal brand. Okay, next point we can see from the screen is Google yourself. Okay, Google yourself. Does it sound very weird to all of you here? Okay, does it sound very weird to Google yourself? Um, yeah, just to Google yourself. Like for example, Cherry, right? Just Google like Cherry Chin on Google. <laughs> well, it's not necessary. So I would say. Because why? Because when you are not clear about something, okay, when you heard of something new, what would you do? You Google, right? So for example, uh, same goes to the employer or the recruiter, okay? If, for example, Cherry today went and applied for a job in company ABC. So company ABC don't know who exactly is Cherry, am I right? Only based on her resume. So what they would do, they would actually go and Google you. They will actually Google Cherry Chin on, uh, on Google and see what comes up. Okay, there is a possibility that they will actually go and Google you. All right, and yes, you didn't hear it wrongly. Even there is statistic, okay, show that they are actually company reject the candidate after they re-evaluate the candidate social profile, social media profile. Yeah, so Google yourself to see what's coming up. Who knows, it might shock you, okay? And another tips for this would be fully utilize the privacy setting in your social media. So um, to hide anything that you don't want to make public. So for this, I think you guys are more expert than me myself, okay? You guys are a lot more, you know, tech savvy than Cherry here, I assume, okay? So you can actually go and try it out. See what's coming up. If you Google, for example, Liana, okay, or Intan, ah, you can see what's coming up later. So I understand that uh, during your uni school or your college or your high school, your primary school, you get to work a lot on homework, am I right? You get to work a lot on homework, a lot of assignment, right? 
because I experienced that too during my um, uni life. I have a lot of homework, a lot of tutorial, a lot of assignment to work on with my friends or my groups, right? So even after you graduated, even after you graduated, you will still need to do some homework here. Okay, you will still need to do some homework when it comes to job searching. Okay, when it comes to job searching. So research for the company profile or the employer profile is actually a must homework to be done. Okay, it's actually a must homework to be done. You can actually go to their website. Okay, for example, company ABC, you can go to company ABC on your website uh, to see. Okay, their blogs or their social media platform like Facebook, like Instagram, if they have TikTok, check it out. Okay, to learn more about the business, to learn more about the business nature, the industry itself, and their current um, current information on the site. Okay, so that when you comes to the interview, you wouldn't ask some silly questions like, oh, may I know what does company ABC do? So this is actually a question that shouldn't be asked actually during the interview. The interviewer wouldn't expect this kind of questions coming from the candidate itself because they already assume the candidate would do certain homework, which is the research on the company that actually apply job for. Okay, so if you have specific companies or firm in mind to work with in the future, right? So probably you are studying um, um, accounts that you want to enter the big four, okay, very famous big four. So you would need to know exactly what does the big four uh, do, okay? What does the company do and what some, some history or what are the um, well-known people from the firm itself? So you need to do some homework on that and you can actually search them on social media and don't be afraid to engage with them. Okay, don't be afraid to engage with them by commenting regularly on their posts or even you can actually share their content, okay, their social media content on your profile. Yeah, you can actually do that. Okay, you can actually do that. Because you can share some good things, some value things with your friends, am I right? With your connections on social media. That is how actually we are actually providing the value to the others. And that is exactly how uh, it helps to increase the rate of us being noticed by the firm itself. Who knows, am I right? Ah, they might notice that, uh, for example, this Liana actually comment regularly on their profile. Okay, on their pictures or on their posts or even share their posts. So they will notice that, oh, who is this Liana? Then they might check it, check you out. And when you apply a job on their website later, they know exactly who are you. They would know exactly that you are the one who actually support their posts and actually keep an eye uh, on their social media. What's the latest update? So this is a things you might you can do you can choose to do if you already have a have in mind which company that you want to work with later okay all right so last but not least is the social media ethic here okay the very first thing that you would need to take note on will be your choice of word okay your choice of word what kind of word that you would choose to use on your social media and how do you present yourself on social media Okay, are you present yourself as the knowledgeable person? Are you professional enough? Okay, and yeah, definitely, definitely we need to avoid voicing our personal opinion on sensitive topic like um, Malaysia politic issue here. Okay, avoid that. Okay, and let's keep our profile as business focused as possible. Can do or cannot do student. Let me see what do we have in our chat box first. Oh, we have a lot of comments here. I didn't notice just now. Oh, I actually saw the students actually asking questions here. And yes, like Daphne said, we will have a Q&A session later where all of you um, can actually unmute yourself to ask the questions to both Cherry and Intan later. Okay, so be patient and stay with us until at the end, so we can go to the Q&A session and then listen to all your doubts and we hope we can actually clear all of your doubts. All right, can, can do, huh? And then we shall move on to the next slide. Okay, what do we have in our next slide? Fourth agenda of the day, okay? 
are you ready for job applications? So after we discuss about uh, whether or not our social media would affect our job search and job applications, now we are going forward. Next step, which is, are you ready for job applications here? Okay. So without further ado, let's go to the next slide. Okay, next slide, we do have uh, a few a few points here to share with all of you, okay? So after we complete our decent profile, like I mentioned just now in social media, we'll, next, we'll move to next step, which is job applications. So on the stream itself now, you guys can see there's actually two different type of job seekers, okay? There's actually two different kind of job seekers here. The first one is active job seekers and the later one is passive job seekers okay there's a lot of words you might think that there's a lot of words you don't know what is it it's okay let's explore it one by one all right but make sure you guys are still awake and be with us okay or not okay okay so let's start with uh active job seekers first so what is active job seekers here okay so uh an easier way for you guys to understand in in one sentence is that are you always on the move okay are you always on the move in another words active job seekers are those people who are looking for job actively okay they are looking for the best role to fit in based on their educational level okay based on their educational level based on their working experience based on their knowledge based on their skill set okay like i mentioned just now they are always stay in job searching mode Okay, they are always in job searching mode. So if you want to be an active job seeker, right, you will need to make sure, okay, you will need to make sure your profile on Xtremo job portal is up to date. Okay, not only on Xtremo, okay, not only on Xtremo, but also on other platform as well, including the resume document that you send in for any job application. Make sure it's an updated one. Okay, make sure it's an updated one like uh, Intan mentioned just now. It's very important for us to have an updated resume. Okay, so talking about the salary. So this is a very interesting topic that I think everyone wondering. All right, so talking about the salary, the first thing first that is that you must know your worth. Okay, you must know your worth. So it's your homework time again. So you need to do some necessary research on the market rate itself. Okay, it would depends on the job itself. Okay, on the with the job itself, the industry that you want to work in. Okay, and of course the locations of the office. Okay, locations of the job itself that you apply for before you went in to the interview room and negotiate with the employer or recruiter. Okay, I will I will say that there will be um difference in the rate. Okay, in the market rate, based on different kind of jobs and also the industry and definitely the locations of the office or the job itself okay there's not a mass that is like uh, can use across every every industry or every job okay there's none whereas passive job seekers are the opposite one opposite one okay passive job seekers are the opposite one instead of actively looking for a job they did it another way what they do okay what they do they connect with the trusted recruitment firm here so in malay we actually call it agency pekerjaan okay agency pekerjaan here just like extremo extremo is actually uh agency pekerjaan in malaysia okay in malaysia so just like extremo we help people uh like job seekers we help them to connect with the employers that welcome prime talents to join their company just like Intan mentions, right, we are like the matchmaker. We match you a job, a right job with the right fit of employer here. Okay. And some more, if you engage with Xtremo, right, it's actually free of charge. Okay. It's actually free of charge. You don't have to pay satu sen pun tapaya. Okay. Satu sen pun tapaya. You don't have to pay anything just to get the free um, career tips or career advice from our recruitment advisor, from our RA, okay? No need pay anything. It's actually free of registrations, free service for you all, all right? Chante or not chante, 
Ah, cantik sangat kan? Alright, so for passive job seekers, they also need to um, fully utilize, not to need, but they will actually fully utilize their connections. They know the importance of the connections itself. By how? They will actually share their profile with their relevant connections for the desired job roles. Okay, they will share. For example, I know that Intan actually from um, same industry as mine, but Intan is actually working for in another company. But I know Intan, right? So Intan is actually my connections. So I wish to join Intan's company. So I share my profile with Intan and ask for her favor that, can you do me a favor? Maybe you can actually share my profile with the HR department to see if there's any job openings, then you can actually notify me because I'm actually looking for a job. So this is where we can see that connections is so important in your job searching journey, okay? All right, so I would say passive job seekers are a little bit smarter, am I right? Because they don't do it themselves, but they engage with someone else. They engage with their agency pekerjaan to look for a job for them. So isn't it a smarter way? Do you guys agree? I want to see some of your response because I'm afraid that um, Cherry is talking alone here and then there's no there's no response from our students in UMT. I want to know if the if you guys are still awake there or you guys fall asleep already. <laughs> ah, okay. I actually saw that response coming in a lot, a lot. You guys actually giving me a lot of emoji and I feel so happy here because I'm not talking to the wall, <laughs> right? I'm talking to how many people we have here today? 700 people. Yeah. So 700 people must be giving a lot of you know, emojis or response to Cherry so that I know you guys are still awake there. All right. Although I cannot see your face like directly here, but eventually we hope that uh, in the future, perhaps we can have some physical workshop and I can definitely and eventually finally see your pretty or handsome face. Okay. Let us continue. <laughs> All right. So, um, yeah. This kind of uh, connections, right? We're actually calling it as um, re re referral and uh, recommendations here. Okay, this is what we call the referrals and recommendation. Just like in the previous slide, who knows, right? The connections that you have, like in Tan, <laughs> can actually refer you or recommend you to your desired job. Am I right? So again, we don't miss out any opportunity, okay? Lastly, a passive job seeker is always ready for the unknown. Okay, it's always ready for the unknown here. So I would say it's like um, risk taker. <laughs> it's like a risk taker, like Intan, Intan again. <laughs> so uh, all of a sudden, Intan gonna kill again. <laughs> so may I know who is a risk taker here? Raise your hand high so I can see you. Okay, not only referring to our desire roles here, but Let's stay open minded. Okay, let's stay open minded to every possible roles, right? Life is, you know, life is really short. It's too short to work on something repetitively every day. Am I right? So, why not we just learn something new, you know, get to learn something new or challenge ourselves sometimes so that it's not a waste to come to this world in this life, right? So suddenly it became a motivational talk here, <laughs> but you guys like it or not? You guys like it or not? Must like it, okay? Cannot tell me that you don't like it, <laughs> all right? So finally, we come to the last step of our job search strategy here, okay? Finally, the last step already. So let's go to the next slide. So during this step, we will be discussing what is an interview. Okay, what is an interview and how do we ace it? How do we excel in it? So guys, make sure you are still following me with Cherry here and don't forget to drink some water, okay? Don't forget to drink some water to keep yourself hydrated here, all right? Because it has been, uh, I think, one hour since we started. So it's time for you to drink some water, keep yourself hydrated because today I saw the weather is really hot out there. All right, it's very hot. Sometimes it's hot, sometimes it's raining. It's very easy for, you know, human like us fall sick. So make sure you drink enough of water, rest enough. Okay, enjoy the sessions. So let's go to the next slide. Okay, so in short, in a short and sweet and a 
brief sentence. So what is an interview, guys? Who knows what is an interview here? Okay, so like I said, in a short, in a sweet, in a brief sentence, it's actually a session where you pitch for yourself. Correct or not? Correct or not? I believe, I think most of you can actually, you know, attend to a lot of presentations for your assignment at your university. Am I right? So you will need to present in front of your, you know, your college mates or and your lecturer. So this is like the pitch itself. You will need to sell your ability. You will need to sell your USP, your unique selling point. What is so special about you? Okay, your specialties, your interests, your patience, and your career objective to the employer, to the recruiter, to the interviewer. Basically, am I right? So it is also your opportunity to get to know your employer or you know the companies, the person that you would report to better. Okay, because you will you will get the chance to clarify your doubts, your questions, you get to learn more. Okay, you get to learn more in details about the positions that you have applied in the company. Okay. And Probably this is the company that you're going to join later, am I right? So you're going to learn more about it, study more in details about the company that you're going to join later. All right. Most importantly, most importantly, huh? you would also need to showcase and justify. Okay. You need to showcase and justify why you are the right talent. Okay. Why you are the right fit for the role. So don't take it too hard. Okay. Don't take it too hard because when you panic during the interview, right? Your brand, your brand, uh, your brand gonna go blank. You would suddenly like forget what you want to say. And even though probably like you prepared already, you might forget. So in order for you not to panic, we have some tips for you later. Okay, we have some tips for you. So let's go to the next slide. What are the tips that we have prepared for our UMT students today? Next slide. So next slide, we have seven top tips for face-to-face -face interview checklist. All right. So like Intan mentions just now, right? Because before the pandemic, definitely we go to the office, the locations, right? To the company there. And we have a face-to-face -face interview with our employer or the hiring manager. But because of the pandemic, right? We often have a virtual interview instead. Okay, virtual interview, which means a video call like this. We're using Zoom, Teams, Webex, or Google Meet, okay, for the interview to be carried out. So we will be sharing not only the face-to-face -face interview checklist today, but we will also, okay, we will also share with you the virtual interview checklist. All right, what you need to do is just relax, drink water, enjoy and take down certain necessary notes lah, right okay don't fall asleep so first thing first in our checklist here what do we have we have prepared okay definitely right before you go to picnic you will need to prepare some snacks some drinks the picnic um what do you call that the towel that you're gonna bring for the picnic am i right you're gonna prepare many things so same goes to the interview. You will need to prepare as well. So first thing, you will need to ensure all the documents required are ready here. For example, your resume. Okay, resume very important. Your certificate. Okay, if you have any. Your achievement proof. And not to forget your IC photocopy. Okay, all these in hard copy. So why hard copy, Cherry? Nowadays, the technology is so advanced already. We already send soft copy la, via email. You still use hard copy, man? Definitely, we are still going to use hard copy. Why? For safety purpose. Why safety purpose? Okay, so understand that, um, you know, during when the hiring manager approach you that shortlist you for interview, they will actually already require this kind of uh, document from you. So you will send to them using... Um, Email, am I right? That is soft copy. But we must always prepare if the hiring manager, when you go to the interview and the hiring manager forgot about the interview because everyone is so busy at work. So sometimes people tend to forget, okay? So we must forgive them and then we must prepare this kind of material with us. So in, um, in case they actually forget and we can actually hand in the document, the hard copies that we have actually prepared with them. 
Okay. Um, a very, very true story for Sherry. Okay. For my previous campaign, I actually went for an interview and the HR really forgot about uh, my interview appointment. So luckily, luckily, I really did prepare all these documents in hard copy here huh? so that I can actually quickly refer to that. Okay, so I actually personally, I experienced this. So I think this is actually a very important note for you guys to take note on. All right, just in case. All right. Right. Okay, second thing is research. Okay, research. Like I mentioned just now, you will need to do homework. Okay, you will need to do research for the companies that you are going to join, for example, the details of the company itself and the job role, the positions that you apply, all right? But how are you going to do research? Like I mentioned, you can go to their company websites, you can go to their blogs, their social media, okay? LinkedIn, IG, Facebook to find out more about them, okay? Basically, if you go to their website, it's already good enough, but you will need to know, okay? How active are they on social media? Who knows? You dig some gold from there, am I right? So, you know, don't cut the good, do some research before you go to the interview. All right, prepare. All right, always prepare. And third, practice. So what you need to practice? Practice to be in the interview. All right, so you need to practice the content that you have for yourself, the voice, your voice, your tone that you're going to use during the interview. Am I right? And your body language. Your body language, how are you going to move? Are you going to move like big, big one or just a small one? Definitely a polite one would do, okay? And eye contact. Eye contact is very important, all right? Based on certain studies, okay? People tend to listen to you more attentively if you look into their eyes. Look into their eyes, okay? Look into their eyes, make some eye contact with your recruiter or the employer or the interviewer, all right? anticipate so you will need to anticipate what are the interview questions that will be thrown by the interviewer and then find out how you're going to answer these kind of questions okay fully utilize google and xremo all right on xremo blog itself you can actually go to our blog okay blog.xremo.com so maybe Intan can help me type in the chat box to let our students know the link exactly to go to our blog all right, so our blog, we have a lot of articles that can actually help you to anticipate the interview questions that are going to thrown by our interviewer, not our interviewer, but the interviewer that you apply job in, okay? You can go to that and search for the certain articles. We have the questions for you. We have the answer for you as well. So you can actually refer to that, all right? So you know what exactly they will ask and then how you can actually answer to increase, to add on to your scores during your interview, all right? And then following up, we have gadgets here. Okay, gadgets, ensure all your mobile devices are on silent mode, all right? So maybe you go to the interview, you will surely bring along your mobile phone, am I right? Who knows, you're gonna bring tablets, iPads, am I right? I don't know, but make sure they are in silent mode. Keep them silent, all right? Else during the interview, suddenly your phone rang, it will actually distract and disrupt interview session carry out halfway so make sure they are in silent mode so this is actually another thing that you must tap not on like for example like webinar now okay we will need to make sure our fonts is in silent mode as well so that it won't disrupt cherry when cherry trying to share more career tips with our umt students am i right okay so the next thing is dress for success okay your dress determine your success here how Okay, you will need to choose your formal attire one day before the actual interview day, all right? So to avoid the kalang kabut on the day itself. So probably the interview in the morning, 9 o'clock a.m., you will need, baru lah you wake up and then find for the outfit, and then baru you realize that the outfit is actually in the washing machine. Apa macam? Right. So you need to prepare the outfit, iron the outfit one day before and hang there. So the, 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 the first thing, when you wake up, open your eyes, you will see the outfit there already. So it's actually a very good tips for our students here as well, okay? So don't kelang gabut, all right? Don't kelang gabut. Make sure you are prepared before you go to the interview. And of course, we need to stand by earlier, all right? So when we receive notifications from our hiring manager that uh, we are actually shortlisted for the interview, 
Okay, so we know exactly where to meet our hiring manager for the interview. Am I right? They will provide a locations for you. So what you need to do is that you will need to plan your transportations. Are you going to drive there yourself? Or you, are you going to take public transport? Or are you going to take Grab? Right, so you need to know how long does it take? For example, for example, huh, I'm staying at um, PJ, but my but my um, office to interview is at Seremban. How long? I think uh, there would be like 30 to 40 kilometers. So it takes sometimes almost one hour journey. So I will need to plan my journey ahead. What time I need to wake up? What time I need to head out? Uh, what time I will arrive? Always, always be ready at the interview place. 30 minutes, 15 to 30 minutes early. Okay, I think 30 minutes should be fine. 30 minutes earlier at the location so that you would actually get comfortable with the environment there. So this will actually reduce the nervous inside you, the panic inside you, because you're already comfortable with the surrounding. So it actually helps you to smooth your, you know, your overall mood so that you can carry out the interview better in your best self okay and you know we always need to check your car if you want to you know drive make sure that the water tank is full and you have full tank of petrol don't halfway no petrol i don't know how probably you need to reschedule your interview okay so you need to stand by early and plan everything ahead before the day of the interview okay or not okay so apart from this of course we do have tips for Virtual interview also. So let's go to the next slide. Yeah, so a lot of thumbs up. Good, good, good students. You guys are awesome. Like in fancy, you guys are awesome. Right, I'm so happy. We have so many UMT students with us today here. Okay. So for that, we have useful tips for video interview check this here. First thing first, always prepare as well. So if you go to face-to-face -face interview, you will need to prepare. But virtual interview also need to prepare now. Ah, so what we need to prepare for virtual interview here, you will need to test your internet connections. All right. All right. So nowadays, a lot of people using internet, am I right? So internet times, sometimes they will you know, tend to lag a little bit. So you need to test your internet connections first and your devices. Are you going to use a laptop, desktop? or tablet or your mobile phone. So always prepare a plan B. What if your internet down because there's late payment? Ah, your internet gonna bar during your interview day. Oh my God, how lucky are you, right? Or your laptop broken on the day of your interview. Apa ah, macam? So you need to have a plan B. Perhaps your mobile phone ah, using your own mobile, lah, right? Your hotspot. Second thing, the background, okay? Ensure your background is clean and simple, or you can actually use a simple virtual background here, just like um Cherry's one or Intan's one. Okay, a clean and you know simple background so that uh the employer or the interviewer wouldn't be able to see the messiness in your bedroom or in your kitchen or in your living room. Okay, make sure you have a nice background here. So not need to be those fancy fancy type. Just a simple and clean background, all right? And ambience. So to prevent any distractions or noisy area as your interview venue. So probably tomorrow is your interview day. Today, you might need to remind your friends or your families that you are going to have a very important interview tomorrow. So maybe they can actually arrange their, uh, their things or their errands. Okay, so make sure there is no noise that that would actually distract you or annoy you during the interview. And last but not least is the body gesture here. So it is a must, like I said just now, it is a must to have proper eye contact and sit up straight in the camera itself so that it actually show you are confident for the interview. You have prepared well for the interview, okay? Normally, this kind of candidate, huh, they will actually attract the employer because of the confidence itself. They know that you are confident because you have prepared well. All right. And next, we are going to share with you how to get notice on LinkedIn. Let's go to the next slide. Okay, what do we have here? How to get notice on LinkedIn. 
Okay, so the first key point we had over here is use relevant keywords. So in another words, it's your USP. Yes, it's your USP again. Okay, your unique selling point. For example, huh, this is only example. Huh? This is Cherry example. Cherry's keyword is patient. Okay, it's patient. So weave it into our headline on LinkedIn. Our summary on um, our summary on LinkedIn. Okay, so different people they might have different keywords to be inserted in different areas. Okay, so not only on our headline, our summary, but you also need to figure out the keywords for your experience. Okay, keywords for your experience, your skills, and anywhere else they make sense on your profile. Okay, after all, we all want to sell ourselves to a good company. Am I right? But, but guys, don't, don't, don't overdo it. Don't overdo it, okay? Instead, you will need to make your keyword that you use able to flow with your overall writing, okay? It will run smoothly instead. It won't like, um, you know, like the bumpy road is not smooth, right? So we don't want that. We want to have a smooth sentence, all right? We want to have a smooth sentence here. So the next key point here, we, what we have, Next key point, it's your appearance. So what is appearance here? How do we have a good appearance on LinkedIn, right? So nowadays, actually many people, many people online, they're actually seeking value, seeking value, okay? So if you could provide some insightful content on your LinkedIn profile, people tend to pay more attention and stay longer on your profile because they want to learn, because they want to study in details about it. And that is exactly how we are going to attract the right persons to go to our profile and even easier, okay? Easier to be noticed by others, okay? Next point is something that we kept on mentioning all this while. It's connections, okay? Connection is so important here, all right? So after you complete your profile on LinkedIn, you cannot just leave it there until the next time you are going to apply for a job okay we cannot just leave it blank there like for example today we talk about linkedin so eventually liana don't have a linkedin liana again <laughs> liana don't have a linkedin so she heard that cherry said linkedin is very useful okay then she go and create a linkedin and after two years baru liana graduate baru lah liana go back to linkedin so no no we cannot do that, okay? We cannot leave it until the next time we are applying for a job because there is a survey done earlier, okay? There is a survey done earlier when people started actively commenting on posts, engaging with other users and writing content on LinkedIn, there is exactly, okay, not exactly, but there is significant uh, increase in their followers, the number of followers, and don't even mention the profile views. It's actually triple higher. Okay, it's triple higher. So this is actually a good platform here. Okay, this is actually a good platform where you get to grow your connection. All right, be more visible and learn more about the potential opportunity in the market. So the last point, um, how to get noticed on LinkedIn is that you must know who is your audience. Who is your audience? So as you craft your profile on LinkedIn, Think about who will be reading it, okay? Think about who will be reading it. Likely, um, other professionals or other recruiters in your, in, in your industry, okay? So what will those people specifically want to see in a job seeker like you? What they actually want to see? Is it some certain technical skill or experience or even the qualities here? Okay, so you need to find out these questions, this answer to the questions that I mentioned just now. All right, so to help you to figure out the answer to these questions, follow a similar process to the one you would, okay, follow the one that you would writing or tailoring your resume. All right, so you must have some role model that you want to follow his or her step, right? So you can actually follow it when you're actually crafting your profile or um, crafting your resume here. 
All right, so pull up a few job descriptions for a type of job that you have in mind or you would like to have. For example, take Cherry as an example. So Cherry is actually in marketing field. So Cherry would need to pull up a few marketing job descriptions to see what are the common themes over there. Okay, to see what are the common themes over there, the job description itself, and what seems to matter to these employers for the job that uh, Cherry wants to have. Okay, so like I mentioned, Cherry wants to work in marketing field. So I will look across a few, a few marketing job descriptions from different companies. So I, I will go and study it and then see which are the similarities in across these different companies' marketing job descriptions. So that are the things that they actually want to see in your job seekers and Cherry's going to be that way. Okay, Liana going to be that way. Intan going to be that way. All right, so not only that, okay, not only that, you will need to think about um, which one apply to you, okay? Which one apply to you and relevant to you, huh? What I meant is that you will need to see, uh, you need to think and need to see which one actually relevant and apply to you and your experience, okay? Which specific words or phrase are being used to describe them, okay? Then these actually will be your keywords, okay? These will be your keywords. They are likely what um, recruiters are searching for when they are looking for people like you. So for example, I really gave a lot of example today, right? So I hope you guys love this example and then I hope you guys find it really useful for you all, all right? For example, Maybe, maybe many companies that you are interested in are looking for a programmer, okay? Looking for a programmer that is proficient in JavaScript, all right? Or a digital marketer with experience putting together webinars, all right? So if you are struggling, okay, if you are struggling, look for people who have the jobs that you want, all right? Try to look on LinkedIn itself and then look who is your role model. Look for some people you, you look up to and then study their profile, what they do. Okay. Okay. To see um, what skills or what experience that they emphasize on their profile. So this would definitely help you. Okay. This would definitely help you to understand your audience better. And thus, you can furnish your profile the way it could actually attract your audience awesome or not awesome now i want to see you guys type awesome or not awesome in the chat box okay if you think this is really awesome la cherry type awesome, type awesome there ah cherry want to see awesome right so awesome because you guys are awesome okay right yeah let me see the chat i saw actually a few questions coming in during you know, throughout the webinar, but no worries, we'll be entering our Q&A later on, okay? We will also um, share with you guys our poll survey result later to see uh, majority of our UMT students are the challenging person, the risk taker here, or the opposite one, okay? A lot of awesome coming in and I'm so happy. I'm sure Intan also so happy because you can see a lot of you know, students engage with us and happy to have us today. I assume only. Uh, I assume only. Okay, let's go to the next slide. Okay, right. So for this, I would like to remind you guys to actually sign up with Xtremo because we have it's actually a very good platform for you guys to not to, not only to connect with the employers that you wish to work with, and also you can get free, okay, free hair. Huh? Free of charge, ha? satu sen pun tak payah. Satu sen pun tak payah. Free of charge punya career tips and career advice. Okay, instead, uh, we actually provide some uh, resumes advice for you all as well. So you feel free to reach out to our recruitment advisor. Okay, or you can email your resume later to contact at xremo.com so that they can actually help you to uh, look through your resume and advise you anywhere that you need to improvise. Okay, we do have that as well. And yeah, make sure you sign up with us here. You can you have the QR code, you have the link, www.extremo.com slash sign up. All right. And yes, we will be giving how many mystery gifts already are in time today?
Intan, are you muted? Oh, Intan, can you unmute? Ah? Okay, hello. Hi. <laughs> Hi. Hi, Intan. I want to ask how many mystery gifts we are giving away to our UMT students today? Ah, tadi kita dah cakap kan masa awal-awal tu bukan dua tapi tiga mystery gifts. Ah, so ah. Ah, banyak kan ada tiga. Ah, so korang tak nak ke tiga mystery gifts tu? <laughs> yeah, so we have three mystery gifts to give away to our <laughs> students today and each certificate will be provided through your email address that you use to sign up with Xtremo. So don't you forget which email address that you have used to register with Xtremo, okay? Because we came a lot a lot a lot like really a lot this kind of cases people you know the students tend to forget which email address that they use to sign up with extremo and then they will actually questions or ask us like oh when can i get my e certificate like it already sends to the email address that you use to sign up with us okay without further ado let's go to our next slide because we are going to reveal to you the first giveaway okay the first yeah. giveaway here we have win share to post gift so from here you can see there's only three simple steps and a screenshot of how does this look like okay so what is a share to post gift how to win first thing first i believe you all already not down what you have learned throughout the whole webinar am i right what you have learned okay your key takeaway from the webinar here job search strategy and uh route to success okay so you have not done what you have learned here very easy. You would just need to post this on your LinkedIn. Post what you have learned on the LinkedIn in a post and tag X remote. Okay? Tag X remote. But make sure you have followed us on LinkedIn. Okay? Make sure you follow us and tag us in your post. Okay? Our LinkedIn handle is X remote and why? And don't forget to connect with Cherry and Intan here. Don't forget to tag us in your post as well because it will actually increase your chance to be noticed by us, okay? We will see it in our LinkedIn who actually tag us and I will, we will look into your post, okay? So the winner will be the post who get the higher likes, okay? The highest like will be the first winner of today. And we do have some time for you all. Lah, so don't have to straight away work on it. The cutoff time will be tonight, 9 p.m. 9 p.m., right, Intan? Yes, it's actually at 9 p.m. And we'll announce the winner um, maybe probably around 9.30 p.m. So, uh, jangan lupa share uh, what are your key takeaways. And also, don't forget to follow and also tag us in LinkedIn. Uh, and our account is xremomy. And also get more friends to like. Uh, ajaklah kawan-kawan ke your cousin. Kalau yeah. friends pun ada LinkedIn, ha, make sure uh, to make them like your post. Okay? Uh, yes, exactly. That's how you actually connect with more people and expand your network. All right, don't forget to share and then follow and tag us in Xtremo. And if you can tag Cherry and Intan, that would be great. But it's it's a choice, huh? it's a choice, okay? But I wish to see you there. We wish to see you on LinkedIn, okay or not okay? And definitely, we hope to see you on Xtremo Job Portal too, okay? So let's go to the next slide. Next slide. Okay, here is actually our poll survey result already. I was I was thinking that um to review this like slowly, but we're actually running out of time because we have Q&A sessions later. So the result here, have you ever challenged yourself just to make your life more interesting? And the red color is no, the yes is blue color. So we can see that most of our UMT students here actually are the risk taker. They always want to challenge themselves to make their life more interesting. Maybe one day we can do cliff, cliff, cliff jumping together. <laughs> Who knows, right? So yeah this is the result that we have actually there's no right or wrong like intan mentioned just now there's no right or wrong answer but we just want to know what kind of students that we have in umt only and it's only like an engaging kind of activity with our umt students so we let's don't waste our time let's go to the q and a sessions next slide okay now it's actually the q and a sessions so we need to 
look back what passions do we have uh, from the students today? Okay, okay. Uh, where's the question? Okay, the first question is coming from uh, one of our UMP students. Let me read out uh, the questions here. Is it necessary to know who is the company founder name for interview preparations? Okay, so for these questions, it's actually from Kayung. Um, so sorry if I did not pronounce your name correctly, ha. Huh? All right. So, uh, yeah, Kayum. Oh, yeah, Kayum. Oh, okay. All right. So yes, if possible, okay. If possible, you can actually you will need to do some research to know who is the founder because sometimes we want to know the background of the company itself. Like, uh, how does this company actually? Uh, when does this company uh, establish? Uh, and uh, when is the year? What when is the year? And then who is the founder? What how he or she comes to a realizations that they want to build this company and why what they offer to help people in this world. Okay, but sometimes if you are not able to get this kind of information, it's okay too. It's okay too. It's only a good to have this knowledge, okay? Because you need to know, my right, if you work for certain companies, you need to know like who are you working for. Am I right, in fact? You agree? Yes, I do agree with your statement because it's very important uh, to know uh, with whom you're working for. And uh, so, yeah, it's, it is necessary to know the company's founder name uh, for your interview preparation because uh, sometimes akan ada company yang akan tanya uh, this kind of question. So, yeah, be prepared, okay? So, okay. I think it's time for us to see, uh, to read the next question. From Sharifah Anim. Uh, the question Sharifah is. Sharifah Anim. Yeah. Okay. I have a question for hard skills like coding. Do I need to have any certificate to support my claim? Okay. Uh, for this question, macam coding kan. For coding, uh, projects uh, show your skill more than your certificate. And yes, it is important for you to have a certificate, but. It is um, more important for you to show your skills by having a portfolio. So if you could show your past projects to your employers, then it would be really great. Lah. Yeah. 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 And my answer. not oh. to forget to mention that, right? In time, I think we forget that as well, that we actually still have our second and third gift to give away to our students today. Am I right? So even uh, actually initially, right, these two gifts will be given to the people who actually unmute them and ask us a questions. So if you guys want to ask the questions, want to win our second and third mystery gift, right, you can actually type your name in the chat box and uh, Cherry or Intan will mention your name, then only you unmute yourself to ask us a question. So that is exactly how, how easy you can actually win away our mystery gift. We have two, huh? We have, we still have two more to give away to our UMT students today. Okay, so if you want to ask a questions, if you want to win our mystery gift, just type your name in the chat box, let us know, and we will call up your name. Then you can actually unmute yourself to ask us a question. Then you are the second or the third winner of the day. Okay, so let me see if there's any names coming in first. Okay, uh, we do have... Um, it's actually a, uh, uh, I think it's actually the, what uh, the student code number here. So I wouldn't know the name, right? Um, I actually saw some questions. Huh? I just read from here, huh? Kalisa. So Kalisa, we have Kalisa. We have um S five nine two seven one. I wouldn't know who is that, but if you guys can unmute yourself to ask us a questions, you guys will be actually entitled for our second and our third mystery gift. Okay, our second and third mystery gift. But if there is none of you actually want to unmute yourself, we can actually type your questions in our chat box as well. No worries. It's just that the second and the third gift will be forfeited. But we actually wanted to give. We already prepared the gift actually. We just want to give it away to the students. So don't you feel shy? Okay, you can actually unmute yourself to ask us a questions. We are very friendly. We don't buy. Okay. Okay. So. Yeah. <laughs> Oh my God, what? 
Miss Shin, are you single? That is not a, a right question, yeah? Our questions would be related to our topic or webinar topic today, okay? So, I, I, I actually, my Miss, can I ask a question, Fauza too? Yes, yes, you can ask the questions. You can actually unmute yourself to ask a question. Then you will be our second winner of the day. Can so, you hear me? Oh, yeah, I can hear you. <coughs> Yeah, um, for my questions, like, mm -hmm. uh, when, like, we are still student right now, so we have a LI training that we need to do. So, like, through the Xremo apps, do we get, uh, to find a company that, uh, by give along for students like us to do an LI training or what? Um, sorry, I couldn't get your questions. Can you repeat it again? My question is like, can we find a, a company that accept mm -hmm. a student to do the LI through the extra remote new apps? Or it just uh, for um, this app is uh, to find a job for a strike. So, yeah, but we would just want to do for an LI training only, but not a permanent job. So is it uh, available or memang tak ada langsung dekat apps tu? Oh, you mean like interview, huh? Uh, or yes. internship, huh? Yeah, yeah, interview for the LI training. Oh, okay. So for the app itself, right, it's actually for you to register and you can actually use it instead of using laptop. So wherever you go, if you are with your phone, right, you can actually uh, log into your profile and then see if there's any job that excites you, you can apply from that. And there will actually show, show your uh, job application history as well and the status definitely. So you can actually, from there, you can actually know how many jobs that's available on the site and you can search for a job that you like. And from there, if you have applied for the certain jobs that you think you want to apply for this company, right? For example, huh? for example, only, for example, company ABC, you want to apply job, for example, marketing, right? So you just click apply from there. So once you click apply, right, the company will be notified and then they will know that you actually submit your applications to uh, via X remote to their website, okay? Via X remote to, to the company itself. So they would know about your applications and from there, we will actually um, have an interview. If they shortlist you, we will actually notify you. Our RA will reach out to you and then let you know that you're actually shortlisted for the interview. Then we will arrange from there. Yeah, that is how it works. Even though, even though it actually would depends on the company, whether the company is actually looking for a permanent jobs or they're actually for students, okay? Final year students for internship purpose. Yeah, so I hope I answer your questions. Let me see, yeah? Oh, I get it. Thank you, Miss. No worries. So apart from Fauzal Du, I will scroll up, okay? I will scroll up because I actually missed a few questions up there, all right? So, um, okay, from Kalisa. How, many, how much percentage for fresh graduate to get work? So this is actually a very statistic question. Previously, I did actually share with some other university students about the job statistic, like um, actually recently have in 2020 itself, right? The fresh graduate, the number of fresh graduate itself is actually a lot, but due to the pandemic, the demand increased, uh, not the demand actually decreased, but the supply increased. Supply as in the fresh graduate number actually increased, but the demand decreased. But because recently, okay, our conditions get better, right? And then actually the companies are start hiring, okay? Start hiring. So I would say there's actually a higher percentage for fresh graduate to get, uh, to land a job. But first of all, you would need to make sure that you are applying for the right job with the right resume, okay? We cannot have just, you know, one resume uh, and then you send to all company. Okay, you will need to tailor the resume based on the jobs that you apply. All right, different jobs require different kind of resume. So if you guys interested to know more, what kind of job require what kind of resume, we could actually arrange another sessions to talk about the resume also. And then uh, additional points, right, for this, Xremote itself not only would prepare you for the digital resume that Intan present earlier, but we do also have the feature of digital uh, video resume. 
okay, video resume. You can actually create your video resume on Xtremo Job Portal, which would actually make you stand out from the crowd. Okay, for example, if today there's 100 applicants actually share or apply for this job, but they are actually submitting only um, their digital resume. But what if today you are actually submitting a video resume? Huh? It would be very interesting to the employer. Okay, would be very interesting to the employer and also the interviewer. So that is exactly how we're going to make ourselves stand out. Okay, because fresh graduate, there's a lot. Every year, there's a lot of people graduated from different, different universities. So the competitive. I would say the competition is actually very high, but it's just a matter of how you're going to make yourself outstand from the other crowd. Okay. So I hope I answer your questions, Kalisa. And what do we have for next? Okay. So from this students, S59271, say, uh, so Cherry, do I have to make two or three set of resume if I want to send resume to different companies in the same time, or can I use the same resume? So I believe I actually shared this point earlier already. So different companies, different jobs, okay, you will need to have different uh, kind of resume. You need to tailor it best if you can relate it with the job descriptions of the job that you apply, because every job they have different job description, am I right? So you will need to relate it back to the job descriptions from the company itself, okay? So you won't get Kariru or the company won't get confused from the resume itself, okay? Then what do we have next? I will, okay, so from Nurhanina Intan, Nurhanina, she asked, she asked that if we took pure subject, for instance, chemistry, does the company will prefer more detailed course to choose their employee? Okay, so for these questions, would you want to contribute your your points? Okay, so my answer would be, uh, it depends on the position itself and what type of candidates that the hiring managers are looking for. And if possible, you can share your upper, a detail and precise uh, precise points of your skills and also knowledge in your resume to stand a chance to get invitation for the interview. Uh, so. Kalau boleh dalam resume tu kita letak uh, a detail and precise points lah. No need to make it long. Just make it short and concise in your resume. And make sure to point out your skills and knowledge dalam resume. So that nanti lepas ni, uh, it would be easier for you to uh, to get called for an interview. So, yeah. Okay. okay. So for the next question would be from... Uh, I think... From Atika, right? Atika, Atika Liu. Yeah, Atika. Atika asks, what's the difference between resume and CV? So this is actually a very frequent question that I got throughout uh, all the webinars with different universities. So for this, I would say that um, resume is actually a shorter version compared to CV. All right. So CV is a much more de in details, but resume is actually um, much shorter versions. So if you ask for my opinion as a fresh graduate, whether you should submit a resume or a CV, I would suggest a resume. Okay. If you are a professional today, probably I would suggest you to use a CV because you will need to describe your jobs. Okay. Your history in more details. All right. So if as a fresh graduate, you have a shorter experience and you just want to share, right? So a resume would do, okay, a resume would do. And to add on to, to Intan's, uh, Intan's point just now, I think it's actually a very good point that highlighted by Intan. Yeah, it's actually very depends on what kind of job uh, on the job description as well, what kind of job descriptions and also the job requirements stated uh, in the job post itself. So if they said that they require a certain details cost that needed, then probably you would need to include that. Else, you can actually just uh you know share randomly during the interview or the phone interview because usually they will carry out a phone interview first because they uh before they will actually invite you to a virtual interview. Okay, so we hope actually we answer questions from Nur Hanina and also Atika. So Intan, what do we have for next? Okay, let's see. From Chong, from Chong Yong Swan. Okay, the question is, may I know, uh, X remote is related 
to other association in job application? Okay, the answer would be no, we're not related to any other association, but we do have uh, multiple employers that look for potential candidates like you. So, okay, <laughs> let's attend to another question from uh, Manina Iman. Okay. Uh, okay, so Manina Iman uh, actually asked, minimum study stage can register the extremo, it's just for diploma or maybe STPM, STPM stage can register it. So what do you say in that? Okay, uh, I would say not really because <clears throat> uh, Malaysian job seekers are allowed to, even though the job seekers do not have a uh, diploma or STPM or even SPM. So they can actually uh, input the study stage under certificate if the candidates have other certificates. Mm. Okay. Yes, that's then, correct. Uh, next question would be from Nur Gazliana. Okay, greetings everyone. My first question is, do I need to include my working experiences in resume, even if the jobs are totally not related with the position I'm applying? And is it necessary to include working experience that lasted for only a month or a few weeks? Okay, um, yes, your working, your working experience is important to be in the resume, and it may not be related directly to the job that uh, you applied for, but the soft skills such as communication skills, uh, your management skills are applicable to your future role in this company. And even if it's in, uh, even if you work for only months or weeks, um, I think it depends on how you summarize it in your resume. So, uh, to summarize the the answer, it will be you need to put you need to put your soft skill and hard skill. So it doesn't matter if you work for only a month or a few weeks you still need to put because it's very important for your employers to see whether you are fit for their company or not. Yes, exactly. That is a very good point. Another good point highlighted by Intan because no matter how, if you are applying another job that probably is your interest or your patience and it's actually irrelevant with the probably your previous working experience, you can actually still write it out there but try to relate it with the job that you are interested in. Okay, try to relate it back, look into the words that they use in job descriptions and highlight what's your strength, how your strength can actually help to excel in the role that you apply for the job. Okay, and yeah, is it necessary to include working experience? So this one, I think Intan also answered already. So no matter how long, you will still need to include insight. Uh, if you do not want to include, probably you would need to stay uh, instead of months, probably you need to stay years. So if they ask you it specifically, you can explain from there. Okay, you can explain from there. Okay, so next, next, people actually starting to promote their own LinkedIn. Right? <laughs> so next questions we have from Haikal. Haikal said, is CGPA important to get work? So what do you think in that? I would say um, yes and also no, because um, to be honest, your CGPA and your skills, I think it depends on your performance during your interview. So um, usually during the interview, your employers uh, would like to see whether you can answer their questions. And if you get, uh, if you get the job, uh, Diorang nak tengok, mereka nak tengok juga macam mana you perform uh, during your working hour. So, uh, I would say CGPA um, is necessary, especially for your working life, but it is also not necessary. So, it is it's in between yes and no. Huh? Yeah, and to me, to Cherry, okay, or to most of the employers, right, attitude is everything. So even though if you can score very, very high CGPA in your uni life, but you don't have a right attitude at work, okay, then you might get fired or executed from the company as well. Okay, so attitude is everything. If you have the right attitude or willingness to learn in a company, even though you have a very, very low CGPA, okay, you still have the opportunity with you. All right. So Bear in mind, attitude is really everything. It represents who you are, all right? But not the scores that you achieve in your uni life, okay? 
Oh my god, goosebump already. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So next, next, uh okay. Next from City Noor Artikar asks how much salary can fresh graduate demand? Okay, so for this point, I actually highlighted just now during the webinar itself. Okay, so talking about the salary itself, right, it's actually very subjected to what kind of job that you apply and what where is the um, office locations and definitely the industry as well. So there is not no, uh, you know, uh, balance there, but you need to do research for that. Okay, so I couldn't give you like an exact example how much a great fresh graduate could demand because it would depend on the market rate itself. Okay, it would de depends on the market rate itself. Sometimes if you are a marketing student, you will study demand and supply. If demand is actually higher, or no, supply is actually higher than the demand itself, then the market rate probably lower because people might offer a lower rate than you. But it depends also what you can offer to the company. Okay, most importantly is that you will need to do certain research on this and then show the right attitude during the interview. All right, and this can actually help you to score a little bit. All right. So hope you I answer your question, Siti. Right. Uh, next. Do we still have next questions here? Oh yeah. Coming to the end of the webinar, we don't have any more questions coming in. Okay. So yes, guys, actually it's a very good practice here. It's my first time actually seeing students posting their LinkedIn profile. Okay, the link, the URL link inside the chat room to ask for connections with others. But I want to say that this is actually a very good practice. Okay. Who knows, right? You may actually attract some potential employers, future employers, who knows your next door or, you know, your next is going to be entrepreneur and they're going to hire you. <laughs> who knows? Okay. Who knows? Nobody knows what's going to happen tomorrow. Right. Oh, we have one last question here. Okay. So I think I was just taking one last question be before we close up everything. Oh, okay. So from Hannah, can I know how I can get jobs in science study like Zoom Logi or researcher? In Acrimo because I cannot see any re any related study. Who who is it called? Who who? So no worries. Once you have actually, once you have uh registered on Acrimo, right? You can actually reach out to our RA to help you out. Okay, they will actually provide you some advice regarding this issue. They can help you out from that. Okay, so probably at the moment they uh they 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 couldn't respond to you immediately, but definitely they will get back to you. If they did not get back to you, right, you can actually reach out to Cherry. Okay, reach out to Cherry. Uh, you can look for me in my LinkedIn girl or WhatsApp me girl or uh, email me or email to contact at extremo.com. Okay, we will actually help you out from that. All right. Okay, so um, let's go to, to the next slide. So, yeah, we would like to share with you one quote, okay, before we end the webinar for today's sessions from John C. Maxwell, dream don't work unless you do, okay, dream won't work, okay, your dream won't work unless you work on it, all right, so remember, if you have a dream, remember to chase after it so you don't waste your life in this world, all right, so perhaps you would think that dreams is so hard to work on, no worries, as long as you're willing to step up the first step, the step two and step three, you would exact, you would know later. Okay. You would know later. Most importantly is that you would, you would need to know and you would need to willing, you need to willing to step up the first step. The first step is very important. Okay. Once you actually step up the first step, you would foresee what is the step two or step three already. All right, so guys, let's work on our dreams and make your life a meaningful one. Okay or not? Okay, let's go to the next slide towards the end already. So here is actually our contact details. So we will love to tell all things about recruitment here. So you can actually contact us via this, uh, the phone number. Okay. Um, and the email address here, contact at extremo.com and the website. Okay. And the website, www.extremo.com. Okay, let's go to the next slide. Of course, we want to remind everyone to connect with us, not only on LinkedIn, okay? Not only on LinkedIn, but of course, on our Instagram, IG, on our Facebook, on our Twitter, okay? On across all of our platform here, we wish to see you all there. Today, we have 
more than 800 participants, even almost reached up to 900 already. So can I see a tremendously increase in our IG followers here? Can it increase by 100? I challenge you guys. <laughs> okay, so of course, don't forget our contest earlier. Okay, we're going to select the uh, winner with the highest like in the LinkedIn post. So you need to share what you have learned throughout the day. Okay, throughout the webinar and then tag Xtremo, follow us, tag us. And don't forget to tag Cherry and Intan to increase your chances to be noticed. Okay, and yeah, we will review the winner at 9.30 p.m. tonight. And the cutoff time is 9 o'clock p.m. Okay, 9 o'clock p.m. So before we end the whole sessions, um, can we tag a group photo? So, uh, Adi, can you stop sharing screen? And guys, can you open your camera and then we can take a group photo before we end the sessions and continue the rest of the day. Okay, so uh, from MPP, UMT, you can also, Amira and colleagues, you can also uh, open your camera so we can take a group photo. Everyone, can we can take a group photo as our memories? Okay, as our memories today. All right. So I can see a lot of people actually starting to open their camera. I'm so happy to see all of your faces here. Hopefully there's one day we can actually visit to UMT campus and have a physical engagement with our students here. I'm not sure if you guys will still remember me that time or you guys already graduated la, but we hope there's a chance. Okay, we hope there's a chance. There's an opportunity for us to meet. Okay, open your camera so I can see your handsome faces or your pretty faces okay so cherry will be taking the photo i will count one two three then we will take a photo is that okay so make sure you prepare your nicest post out ah make sure that you you know your, your hacker kacha kacha sikit ah, make sure that you look nice because this photo is one but two times sahaja ah. no two time ah. okay so <laughs> on my count okay on my count one two and three. Yeah, I take the first shot here. Okay, I will go like slide by slide, huh? So be patient with me because I only have two hands and um two hands and one 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 head. <laughs> hold on, ah, uh. hold on, uh, guys. Hold your posture. <laughs> Okay, I will go to the next slide and then we're gonna take another photo. All right, one, two, three. Okay, great dog, great dog. I really love the spirit from UMT today. Really, really very awesome. Awesome. Okay, you guys are awesome for the day and thank you for participating and enjoy the session with Cherry and Intan and Xtremo today. Make sure you remember who is Xtremo. We're going to help you find a job. Okay, don't forget to register with us and I shall see you on LinkedIn. So from MPP, UMT, if you have anything to add up, maybe you can, you know, uh, let the students know ke, the attendance club ke, pun boleh, ha? Um, I can loud and clear. Loud and clear. Okay. Um, okay, right now we have 916 participants. Um, so memang, uh, kalau we're back to me, bila participants terlalu ramai, melebihi 500, kadang uh, mencapai ke 700, memang akan baca sedikit login dan sebagainya. Uh, jadi, thank you so much, uh, everyone, especially Miss Sherry and Miss uh, Intan for very, uh, you know, boleh kata sangat bersemangat, uh, bersemangat sangat dan student pun enjoy daripada awal sampai akhir saya rasa chat tu tak pernah berhenti dari action tu pun tak pernah berhenti, asyik naik dia. Jadi, um, okay, saya rasa mungkin saya boleh berbincang dengan MVP selepas ini uh, untuk kita adakan sesi kecara face to face mungkin pihak Xtremo boleh turun ke Terengganu jumpa dengan pelajar-pelajar kita uh, secara face to face kan mungkin masa tu mereka lagi lah excited kalau dalam ni pun tak berhenti agaknya tepukan nanti di uh, secara 
Ber, uh, berdepan ni lebih kita rasa berdegama ada orang tu Ya yeah. Macam tu lah, dia rasa kalau orang macam ni lah Student dia akan minta lingkah diran bila dah habis pun kan Siapa, siapa, semua ada, ada lingkah diran tu abang Ada orang hai Okay, jadi sabar dulu semua, sabar uh, First of all, thank you so much for sharing uh, Miss Intan and also um, Saya juga ada nampak lagi Miss Daphne and also uh, Miss Adila Tun Dan tadi saya nampak Miss Amira Miss Amira Masduki yang first contact dengan saya Also here, uh, dia dalam ni juga eh Okay Ya yeah. <laughs> Okay uh, So, link hadiran saya akan share sebentar nanti Hmm, okay, jadi uh, so far saya harapkan uh, para pelajar especially ada dapat info walaupun uh, Miss kita dah share macam-macam maksudnya mungkin ada beratus-ratus ilmu baru sekurang-kurangnya uh, gunakanlah pada-pada satu daripada seratus tu itu memberi makna yang uh, yang sangat bermakna lah kepada para panel kita dan juga kepada MPP sendiri di atas penganjuran program ini jadi kami harapkan anda semua guna ilmu tersebut dan uh, okay ready ya saya nak share link ya ready sebenarnya <laughs> satu saya buka selama 15 minit sahaja dan saya rasa 15 minit tu pun uh, sudah mencukupi selepas 15 minit saya tidak terima lagi yang mana mana uh, yang PM dan sebagainya tu melainkan yang betul betul buktikan dia memang ada masalah lain dan sebagainya jadi dia open selama 15 minit jadi saya boleh katakan nanti lepas minit saya tutup eh. Okay, link hadiran ada dekat uh, dekat bahagian chat. So Miss Sherry and Miss Intan, thank you so much. Thank you. Nanti kita boleh bekerja sama lagi in future. Eh? Ya, yeah. hopefully there is more coming in. <laughs> What's coming in? <laughs> Okey, jadi rebutlah merit kamu semua. Rebut um, <laughs> merit. Okey, so saya rasa macam banyak dah. Thank you, thank you, Miss. Thank you, Miss. Thank, <laughs> thank you, guys, for being so responsive. I'm so okay, happy so to be here. <laughs> Okay, I think we shall exit for now and thank you again to you MPP AMT and also UMT students today lah. So, bye-bye and have a great weekend everybody. Bye! Bye! Thank you so much everyone. Bye. Have a nice thank day. You. Welcome. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Okay. Thank you so much. Have a nice day everyone. Have a nice day too.